What am I making today? Three words, smoked bat balls. Smoked bat balls? All right, you probably have some questions there. Well, first of all, it's not the little you know what off the <laughs> things that fly around, you know, turn into Dracula. Not those. Bat stands for bacon, artichoke hearts, and tomatoes. Tomatoes in this sense are sun-dried tomatoes. We're gonna be chopping all that up, combining it with a 50-50 mixture of ground beef and ground pork, and we're gonna be smoking it with some olive wood out on the Weber kettle. First thing I gotta do is I gotta get this bacon chopped up. Before I chop it up though, I'm gonna split it lengthwise because part of these we're gonna use to wrap our bat balls. Bat balls, it just sounds weird, but just trust me. So I'm just gonna go straight down the middle here as much as I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. If we can just separate this into two parts, that'll be perfect right there. We're gonna set this one aside for a minute because we're gonna be using this to wrap our bat balls before they go on the Weber kettle. The rest of this I need to chop up. All right, I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna chop up the rest of our ingredients, those artichoke hearts and those sun-dried tomatoes. What I have here are four pieces of, they're like quartered marinated artichoke hearts. Uh, I've used the Caramia brand, there's plenty of different brands. These are marinated in oil. And with that, I have a quarter cup of sun-dried tomatoes. These are like julienne pieces. We're just gonna chop these up together. I'm happy with that. They don't have to be tiny pieces. We want a little bit of bite when they're inside the bat balls. Bat balls. It's kind of fun to say bat balls. Now what I'm gonna do is take that bacon that we chopped up and cook it up in a pan. Just doing some standard bacon frying here. Fry it to your own level of doneness that you prefer. You all know how I like mine, AFS, cooked to acceptable floppy state. So that's roughly how I'm gonna be cooking these pieces. Bacon's looking good, getting browned a little bit. You might say, hey, there's a lot of fat pieces in there. Yeah, that's right, fat is flavor. We are adding these pieces to the inside of the bat balls while the kind of the meatier pieces of the bacon are gonna be wrapped around the outside. So here's our ground beef and pork mixture. The ground beef is 80-20. The pork is obviously a little fattier than that. And this is two pounds. First thing I wanna do is I wanna give this some salt and pepper before we add the rest of our ingredients. It's gonna give it a couple good twists of salt. Good shake of ground black pepper. Now I'm gonna add a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. This is sort of a shaved Parmesan cheese. Some pieces are bigger than other. Quarter cup of breadcrumbs. One egg. Now our artichoke and sun-dried tomato mixture. And our bacon. Time to get dirty. Gloves help. Let's mix this up. And we'll check this in a minute or two to see if we need to add more breadcrumbs if it's too wet. And I am gonna add just a little bit more breadcrumbs, maybe an eighth of a cup. Mix this in. I'm happy with that. Time to start forming these bat balls. So I've got my nice big hunk of bat ball meat mixture here. I'm just gonna start segmenting this so I can get six bat balls out of it. So this is just a rough sort of marking here. We'll see kind of what we're gonna go with. So I'm just gonna take these sections and start forming them into our bat balls. There we go, six roughly the same size bat balls. We got maybe one that's a little smaller than the rest. All right, let's get some bacon wrapped around these and we're also gonna glaze this with a little bit of a balsamic barbecue sauce. So I'm just gonna take one of these right here. I'm going to wrap a piece of bacon around it. It's gonna overlap, just like that. And I'm gonna take a shortened skewer we're gonna feed it through to pin that bacon in place. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of these done and then we're gonna glaze them with that barbecue sauce. So we have one poor little guy right here who doesn't have any bacon. I was one piece short. Well, he'll just have to do without. All right, gonna give these a good glaze all around. 
on the meat and on the bacon. And I might glaze it a little bit later out on the Weber kettle once it's been cooking for a while, but we'll see. Get everybody a good brushing down here. All right, these are ready for the Weber kettle. Let's get them out there. So the Weber kettle is running at 266 degrees right now. That'll actually go higher once I get the lid off and a bunch of oxygen goes in there. And we'll also be adding our olive wood. But first, we need to get our bat balls on. So I have the kettle set up with my cooking grid on top of the cooking grate and one briquette basket that's pretty full. I lit the coals at one side so they're burning across. This is not gonna take that long, 45 minutes to an hour most likely. Let's get our bat balls on. And our poor little guy with no bacon, he can sit over there in the corner. All right, I wanna get my internal meat temperature probe right into this guy. All right, so our internal meat temperature showing 50, which is just right on the money. We've had it out of the refrigerator for at least 15 minutes working stuff into it. So let's go ahead and get our olive wood on and start smoking these. Got my strip of olive wood I'm gonna put on here. You can see here how the coals are lit on one side moving across. Very similar to what you would use like a slow and sear for, but I don't need that much charcoal that the slow and sear would use for this. Briquette basket is perfect. All right, our olive wood is catching. Let's go ahead and get the lid on and smoke these bat balls. So I'm gonna be taking these bat balls to about 165 degrees. This is ground meat, including ground pork. So we're not going rare or medium rare on this. We're taking it to well done. As I said, I might glaze these some more a little bit later, but I kind of doubt it. I think we're just gonna let these ride straight through absorbing that olive wood smoke. And I'm not as concerned with the kettle temperature. If it stays above 250, I'm fine with that. It's that internal temperature of the meat that I want. So I'll see you back here when we're ready to check these. All right, we've been going for about 20 minutes. We're at 82 degrees, 294 kettle temp. Let's just take a peek and see how we're doing and see if we need to add any more olive wood. Ah, those are starting to look good. Really nice color developing there. I am gonna add some more wood, but I'm also gonna add just a few more pieces of charcoal. Shake some of the ash off. Get another piece of olive on there. All right, our olive wood is burning. Let's get the lid back on and keep smoking. All right, we just hit 160 internal. Let's take a look at these and check them with the instant read. Oh, these are looking really good. Let's do a quick check on a couple of these ones in back. That is looking good, 159.8. I think the carryover will bring us okay there. Yep, we are good. I'm going to use my spatula here to get them up. All right, here are the smoked bat balls. Bat balls, bat balls. I just like saying bat balls. So first thing I'm going to do on one of them is I'm going to remove the skewer and see if we totally lose the bacon. It's still edible, but if it hangs on, that'll be a plus. So let's see. Let's see, I'm going to go with this guy right here. All right, kind of held together. We'll see once we cut into them though. And we're gonna cut into this one. Let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that juice. <laughs> look at that. All right, it's time to taste. All right, here we go. First taste of smoked bat balls. Mmm, those are really good. Wow. Really get that olive smoke flavor. I've said before, for some reason, olive with beef especially really works well. It burns hot, it gives off great smoke. I've used it in the kettle several times, and then this mix of beef and pork, it's working great. Mmm, I don't know if you can see in there, but we've got nice, big pieces of sun-dried tomato, those marinated artichoke hearts, the Parmesan cheese melted in here. It's just a great mix of flavor inside these bat balls. 
All right, they're meatballs. I'm calling them bat balls, but I'm just going to keep calling them bat balls because I like saying bat balls. As I mentioned outside, these were taken to 160 degrees, which is really necessary when you're talking about ground pork, especially. Ground beef is even supposed to do that, but a lot of people like their hamburgers a little bit more medium or medium rare. That's a choice you have to make, but when you've got ground pork in the mix, take it to 160. Mm. That barbecue sauce glaze works really well on the outside of this. It's that first hit of flavor you get when you take a bite. And of course, with this being bat balls, bacon, artichoke, and tomato, we can't leave bacon out of the mix here. It tastes great mixed in here. It's a really nice little addition to the outside, those little bacon belts that were wrapped around. Mm. So remember, meatballs don't just have to be meat. You can mix it up, you can experiment, add things you like, add smoke, add sauce on the outside, and you might just end up with bat balls. Mm.